Welcome back to Reliving the War. It's now the 18th of March 1996 and we have another Monday Night War to look at in detail. The WWF, who are currently two weeks away from WrestleMania 12, are presenting their first set of tape matches from their San Antonio recordings. WCW's Uncensored pay-per-view will air this Sunday in Tupelo, Mississippi, while Nitro is live tonight in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We've got a lot to look at today, so let's get stuck in. This is Reliving the War, episode 25. Raw starts off with some footage from a recent Madison Square Garden house show. Big Daddy Cool Diesel had completely turned heel when he attacked his tag team partner Shawn Michaels. Diesel will be in action later in the broadcast. We'll also see a billionaire Ted skit on this very show. This would end up being the final skit due to the USA Network pulling the plug. More on this later. Nitro starts up right away with action. There's no formal introduction to the show until after the first match. So let's look at our opening contests. It's Lex Luger vs Loch Ness on Nitro, while the WWF presents Jake the Snake Roberts vs Davey Boy Smith. So, the Nitro broadcast starts with the Giant beating up Loch Ness on the entranceway. The Giant is saying that he's the true Giant of WCW while Loch Ness completely fails in defending himself. Lex Luger's theme plays in the arena and out walks the total package. He even poses in front of his pyro while the Giant continues to decimate Loch Ness. Lex gets in the ring and he orders the referee to begin the match. Loch Ness gets counted out and it's all over. Lex celebrates like he just won the World title. He even celebrates with Jimmy Hart for a brief moment before remembering that Jimmy is supposedly the enemy. And after the celebration, Lex visits the commentary team where he brags about securing the fastest title defense in WCW history. Apparently, Loch Ness versus Lex Luger was going to be a television title match. Bobby Heenan loves it. Mongo and Bischoff are sickened by Luger's celebration, and the segment comes to an end. Switching over to Raw then, Jake Roberts brings revelations to the ring as Jerry Lawler panics on the headset. Davey overpowers Jake during the initial lockup, but he also gives a clean break afterwards. Jake and Davey then trade wrist locks. Jake signals for the DDT early, but Davey escapes. Roberts gets a DDT chant going as the action starts up again. We see another 1996 Jake Roberts hip toss. He shouldn't have been doing these. Jake again goes for the DDT, but Davey again rolls out of the ring. Very basic storytelling here, but it's quickly established in the opening moments of the match. It isn't third time lucky though for Roberts. Davey sees the DDT attempt coming once again and he takes advantage, pummeling Jake from corner to corner. The referee gets distracted by the bulldog and this allows Jim Cornette to get in a cheap shot. Cornette remembers to play up to the camera afterwards as if the viewers at home caught him doing a vile act. Again, simple stuff that's very effective. Davey continues to hammer on Jake. Davey seems to be a little dubious about going for big moves on Jake and it's pretty clear why. Jake isn't at his best during this time period and he's getting by with the fundamentals here. Smith keeps the clock ticking over by shouting at the audience. Jake eventually gets an opening when he dodges a leg drop. A series of strikes brings Davey to the mat, but Cornette once again helps out the bulldog. Jake finally hits the DDT. It looks like it's all over, but Cornette breaks up the pin by pulling Jake's leg. Jake then grabs Revelations and he begins stalking Cornette around the ring. And then Jake gets counted out. Two count out finishes to start both Raw and Nitro this week. Jim gets chased up the entranceway and we move on to our next segment. Raw gets the first point for obvious reasons. 
Tony Schiavone makes his Nitro debut tonight because Mean Gene Okerlund had the flu, and Tony's going to interview Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage next, while we have more HBK and Bret Hart footage from their training videos over on Raw. Sean's talking to Jose Lothario while more footage of Sean's training gets presented. HBK talks about his first meeting with Jose back when Sean realised he wanted to become a professional wrestler. Jose remembers telling Sean to open his eyes and ears during HBK's training, and Sean says he's continued to do this in the years that followed. Honestly, there's nothing of great substance here. HBK super kicks a punching bag while Jim Ross, who provides the voiceover, wonders if Sean will go into WrestleMania with a new strategy, or will HBK simply rely on the super kick. We go over to Calgary, we see Bret Hart's championship belt collection that he keeps in his home, along with Bret's magazine collection. Pictures of the hitman in full gear are plastered inside the walls of Bret's house. Brett says that he has a lot of pride in his history, but the WrestleMania 12 main event is not about that. The hitman admits that there's a tide of momentum against him, he even sees his own son wearing Shawn Michaels merchandise, and Brett understands that Shawn has an incredible fan following at the moment. Brett then says that the hitman has his own fans, and Brett's fans understand that the hitman has had nothing but tough matches recently. The hitman then reveals that he isn't a fan of Sean's dancing in the ring, he doesn't like the whole persona, and the Iron Man match won't be about dancing in the ring, it'll be the biggest fight of Sean's career. Brett then says that Sean is obnoxious, he's cocky and he's irritating, and the promo ends with Brett saying that fans should look up to the hitman, a wrestler who has respect, instead of looking up to someone like Sean Michaels. Brett once again delivering the goods here, it's a little unexpected too. These two seemed pretty friendly just a few weeks ago, but it's like Brad is now completely honest about his feelings towards Shawn Michaels. Great work. On Nitro, Tony Schiavone announces that our main event will feature a Texas Tornado match featuring Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. Hogan says that the Mega Powers have a ton of momentum after last week's Lumberjack Strap match, and that momentum will continue into the uncensored Doomsday Cage match. Hulk Hogan also calls himself the dirtiest player in the game, and when you think about it, he's probably right. Savage says that he loves the word uncensored, he likes the idea of uncontrollable chaos, and the Macho Man can't wait to get into the Doomsday Cage live on pay-per-view. There's nothing really going on here. Hogan and Savage continue to plug the main event tag team match while saying they'll take on whatever Kevin Sullivan and the Dungeon of Doom throw at them. It's another easy point for Raw here. I think a big problem with Nitro here as the weeks go on is the repetitive nature of their segments, especially with their main event superstars. We've been seeing this same promo for months now, and even if the WWF throws some mid-carder into the ring to cut a promo, at least it's something different. We've got the Public Enemy vs the Steiner Brothers on Nitro next while Goldust battles Fatou on Raw. Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge grab a table on their way to the ring while the audience goes crazy for Rick and Scott Steiner. Eric Bischoff takes a moment to talk about the audience's response to the Steiners, saying that WCW is the number one wrestling show in the world, regardless of the World Whining Federation. Rocco Rock and Scott Steiner start the match off. Rock is able to reverse a tilt the world side slam with an arm drag but Scott pulls the move off during the next sequence. Scotty shows off his power with a big slam before the fight briefly spills to the outside. Johnny Grunge and the dogface gremlin get tagged in as the audience begin barking. Grunge starts off strong but Rick drives his opponent to the mat and the Steiner brothers clean house. Rocco Rock comes back in but Grunge gets an opportunity to deliver a bulldog to Rick Steiner on a chair. Rocco then hits a moonsault back inside the ring along with a DDT. Rocco goes to the the top rope once again, Rick grabs his opponent in midair, and Rick hits a dangerous looking power slam. Scott comes back in and Rock takes a big side suplex from the top rope. Just when you think Public Enemy is dead, Rock o Rock delivers a lion salt to a standing Scott Steiner. Grunge comes back in and Scott finds himself perched on the top turnbuckle. Grunge goes for a suplex, but the sequence gets cancelled when Scotty fights his way out. Scott then delivers an insane belly to belly suplex that again 
again was very close to being disastrous. Rick gets tagged in, but he gets distracted by Rock O' Rock. Rick gets set up on a table. Grunge then attempts a diving senton to the outside, but Scott pulls Rick away, resulting in Rock smashing through the table. Grunge then takes the Steinerizer in the ring, and it's all over. A good, fun TV match here, some incredibly impactful moves from Rick and Scott, and to give them their dues, the public enemy took a beating here, but they still got up and continued to, well, take more beatings, I guess. So Goldust and Fatu have their work cut out for them. We get a recap of the Goldust and Roddy Piper promo from last week. Vince McMahon confirms that Roddy Piper will face Goldust at WrestleMania in a Hollywood backlot brawl. The match gets underway with Fatu delivering a back body drop to Goldust, who is wearing a kilt by the way. Goldust replies with his trademark grounded uppercut. Goldust pulled it off really well here too. Fatu takes advantage when Goldust misses his... What is this? His ass strike? His his butt bump? <laughs> I don't know, but Fatu follows up by lifting Goldust's kilt and slapping his ass. Marlena distracts the referee and this allows Fatu to headbutt Goldust right in the dick. We go to commercial and when we come back, Goldust takes a cutter. Roddy Piper calls in and he says that he fails to see the humour in Goldust and the hot rod is going to destroy Goldust in the Hollywood backlot brawl. The match ends while Piper is still on the phone. Fatu misses a a splash from the top rope. Goldust threatens to teabag his opponent, and the Bizarre One delivers the curtain call for the pinfall victory. A match that played up to the Goldust character quite well here, but the point goes to Nitro. On Nitro, Arn Anderson is facing the Booty Man, and over on Raw, Vince McMahon interviews Camp Cornette. As the Booty Man has a fit on his way to the ring, Eric Bischoff announces that Ed Leslie will face Diamond Dallas Page at Uncensored. The services of the Diamond Doll are once again on the line. Kimberly Page was no more than a prized possession at this point. We also learn that Booker T will be teaming up with Sting at Uncensored. Remember, Lex Luger agreed to the Chicago Street Fight a few weeks ago with the Road Warriors, but then he pulled out of the match. Our Anderson doesn't look amused with all this booty man shit, so let's see what happens. A headlock from the booty man starts things off. Arn fights his way out, but the booty man mocks the enforcer by doing a little strutting and cutting. There's a bunch of fans in the front row trying to remind Arn that he's a horseman, and I'm convinced that Arn was quickly forgetting what the hell was going on as this match progressed. Double A brings the fight to Leslie, but the booty man outsmarts his opponent. Arn gets his head rammed into the top and middle turnbuckle covers, and the enforcer fails to reply afterwards. Arn regains his composure, briefly getting the upper hand once again, but the booty man is able to get the better of Arn. The enforcer is finally able to take control on the outside of the ring after a brief scuffle, and he slows the booty man down by clawing Leslie's reconstructed face. Arn chokes Leslie before focusing on the arm, slamming the booty man to the mat before going to the middle rope. The booty man reverses Arn's attack and a power slam follows along with a back body drop. There is zero flow to this match up here. We see Kimberly Page coming to the ring as woman begins removing her high heel shoe. Nancy tells Kimberly to back off. The booty man tries to defend Kimberly but this just leads to Arn Anderson coming out to attack Leslie. As Arn tries to get back into the ring, the booty man hits a knee strike and the match ends. The booty man defeats Arn Anderson via pinfall. Even if the booty man wasn't a complete joke, this match was pretty boring. Absolutely nothing of substance here. Over on Raw, another Ultimate Warrior video gets aired, a little different this week as it only features the Warrior beating Randy Savage at WrestleMania 7. We then see clips from the past episode of WWF Superstars, where Jake Roberts and Ahmed Johnson announced that they would like to team up with Yokozuna to face Vader, Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith at WrestleMania. Yokozuna was scheduled to go one-on-one -on -one with Vader, so this promo on Raw would feature Kem Cornette's response. I know I've said this a few times, but these Cornette promos really do make you appreciate how good the man was at putting over a match. This six man tag would be the opening contest at Wrestlemania but Cornette treated it like it was the main event while putting his team over and of course accepting the challenge. Owen and Davey Boy get a little mic time to run down their opponents and it's back to Cornette. Jim says that Yokozuna hired Cornette to be his English spokesperson because every time Yokozuna opened his mouth he made a fool of himself. Cornette says that it was he who took Yokozuna to the top, and Vader is considering the WrestleMania match a quote, a 
personal issue. Vader tells the audience that WrestleMania is Vader time before Yokozuna appears on the screen. Yokozuna says he's going to get even. Jake Roberts says Cornette should have read the fine print before agreeing to the WrestleMania match because if Kemp Cornette get defeated, then Yokozuna will have five minutes alone with Jim Cornette in the ring. Yokozuna then demonstrates what he'll do to Cornette as Jim goes into a state of panic. Another point for Monday Night Raw, a good promo here that introduced a new match and a new stipulation. That Booty Man vs Arn Anderson match was woeful. Nitro presents the Road Warriors vs the Nasty Boys next while Raw presents Diesel vs Barry Horowitz. The Nitro tag team match starts out as a complete brawl. The Nasty Boys and the Road Warriors are beating the hell out of each other both inside and outside the ring. Brian Nobbs tries to hit Animal with a double axe handle from the apron and it looks like he hurts himself more than his opponent. Over on the other side of the ring, Jerry Sags takes a main backhander before we go to commercial break. Sags and Hawk are in the ring when we come back. Nobbs comes into the ring for a double team shoulder block and it looks like there's going to be no order to this one whatsoever. Nobbs gets caught up on the top rope and Hawk hits a forearm that sends Bran into the guardrail. Animal goes on the attack on the outside. Sags hits Animal with a plastic chair. Animal completely no sells it and he hits both nasty boys with the same weapon. It's all very very messy here. Hawk and Sags are now in the ring. The road warrior hits a few splashes and follows up with a kick to the dick. Yeah, there's lots of dick attacks this week on reliving the war. Animal comes into the match and Nobbs continues to take a beating. A big power slam from Animal looks impressive and Nobbs is now sweating profusely. Sags gets tagged in and he initially does well. That's until Hawk comes in to wipe him out. Just then, the Steiners show up. Rick is holding the spiked shoulder pad from last week but he loses possession of it when the Nasty Boys and the Steiners fight back. Animal then hits Nobbs with the spiked shoulder pad and the Road Warriors get the win. The Steiners are fighting with Hawk on the entranceway. Hawk fights Rick and Scott off and that's pretty much it. Again, a very messy match here but it was still quite fun. The Nasty Boys were pretty useless though. We see more clips from the Madison Square Garden live show where Taker teamed up with Bret Hart to take on Shawn Michaels and Diesel. Big Daddy Cool then comes to the ring for his match with Barry Horowitz and I'm sure not many of you will remember this match but you'll sure remember what happened afterwards. Diesel pretty much destroys Horowitz at the start of the bout. Big Daddy Cool loses his focus when Paul Bearer makes his way down to the ring with a casket. Horowitz tries to take advantage by attacking Diesel from behind but it's no use. Diesel hits the big boot and Horowitz kicks out and Diesel ends up getting the win with a punch to the face. No jackknife powerbomb today folks. Diesel then turns his attention to the casket approaching it slowly with a look of concern. Diesel then opens the casket and he finds himself lying inside. I've talked about this before in previous videos but this was so well done. That is actually Kevin Nash in the casket and this is a good example of when tape shows can actually be used to a company's benefit. When we briefly see Diesel in the casket, we're seeing footage that was captured earlier in the day. Bruce Pritchard said that a dummy was used during all other shots of the casket. Others say it was Isaac Yankum. But nonetheless, this was done extremely well and Diesel's reactions afterwards are perfect. He doesn't scream in fear, he just looks incredibly disturbed at what he just saw. It's a freaky segment and Diesel acts like he's legitimately freaked out and lost for words. The match sucked but the casket stuff afterwards was fantastic so it's a point for Raw. Main event time, we have Bret Hart vs Tatanka on Raw while WCW give us the Mega Powers vs Ric Flair and the Taskmaster in a Tornado tag match. It's a bit strange that WCW would book a chaotic tag match featuring the Road Warriors and the Nasty Boys and then follow it up with a Tornado tag. Hogan goes after Flair and Savage goes for the Taskmaster to start things off. Hogan and Flair take it to the outside after the opening moments of the bout. The Hulkster puts a macho man oversized hat on the Nature Boy and as silly as 
it is, it still made me laugh. The Nature Boy is able to keep Hogan at bay with a boot to the midsection while the Taskmaster is doing well against Savage on the other side of the ring. Flair brings Hogan back inside, Nate goes to the top rope and this means you can forget about Flair's comeback for a while. Hogan bites Flair in the corner before Rick takes his famous corner bump and now the competitors change it up with Hogan going for the Taskmaster and Savage going after Flair. We get some split screen action and while I appreciate the idea, these Nitro split screens are just too small. Hogan uses the plastic chair that's made an incredible amount of appearances tonight. The fight gets back inside the ring and the match loses sync a little. Sullivan is beating up Hogan but Savage is beating up Flair. Not once did a competitor try to help the other. This isn't a knock by the way, I like how random it is. Reminds me of Tornado tag matches in WWE video games. Hogan gets tossed out of the ring and this allows the heels to do a number on the Macho Man. Hogan gets back into the ring and the Hulkster puts a figure 4 on the Taskmaster. Savage reverses the pressure and Flair takes out his frustrations on Randy Anderson. Randy takes no shit from the Nature Boy. Hogan and Flair are now in the ring alone. Hulk refuses to stop punching Flair in the corner and this forces the ref to grab Hogan's arm. Flair takes advantage and he blindsides Hulk. A side suplex follows but the Hulkster completely no sells it, getting right back up to his feet to flex his 24 inch pythons. Flair and Hogan trade blows but we get another no sell from Hogan. Flair takes his turnbuckle bump once again and this time it sends him to the outside. More split screen footage follows before all competitors end up on the outside of the ring. The heels are now in control. The four men slowly get back inside the ropes as the mega powers now look like they are in trouble. It doesn't last long. Flair is eventually able to hit Hogan with woman's high heeled shoe. Hogan must have noticed that the WWE were taking the piss out of him in regards to taking losses via ladies footwear because the Hulkster once again no sells it and he begins hulking up. Arn Anderson comes down to the ring and he stops Hogan from hitting the leg drop. Hogan goes after double A and Brian Pullman then shows up. Brian jumps the guardrail to attack Savage and in order to make things look spontaneous, Pillman and Savage get into a really scrappy fight that the rest of the competitors struggle to break up. Keep in mind that Pillman was also making ECW appearances during this same time period. The booty man eventually shows up, thank god what a difference he makes. The bell rings and the referee throws the match out. Just then, Zeus, yes that Zeus, walks down to the ring and he's being followed by another huge individual that we had never seen before on Nitro. Bret Hart comes to the ring looking like a million dollars as pink lights soak the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio. This was Tatanka's final match of this WWF run by the way, though he would resurface in the WWE nearly 10 years later. Tatanka gets the upper hand early by raking the eyes of the hitman, going on to attack Bret with punches and kicks in the corner. Bret gets whipped into the opposing turnbuckle but a big boot to the face stops Tatanka. Bret follows up with a second rope clothesline and then an assault begins on Tatanka's left arm. Tatanka breaks out of an armbar attempt but the hitman replies with a running crossbody. The arm again becomes the focus of Brett's attack. Tatanka breaks out of another arm bar, this time following up with a clothesline, and then we see the 123 Kid make his way down to the ring. Remember, Kid and Tatanka are part of the Million Dollar Corporation. Tatanka chokes Brett in the corner as the Kid and Ted DiBiase look on. Brett takes a hard Irish whip turnbuckle bump, and no one took these better than Brett. Have a listen. And to the, buckle. the way Brett would contort his back afterwards made the bump look even more believable. Tatanka applies a chin lock, Brett gets to his feet, and Tatanka floors Brett once again with a knee to the midsection. Tatanka continues to look competitive with a big elbow drop. Even Vince McMahon says that Tatanka is giving Brett a real run for his money as we go to commercial. When we come back, another chin lock is applied. Brett fights out, but his opponent follows up with a body slam. A top rope attack is then attempted but Brett strikes Tatanka and now it's time for Brett to go for his finishing sequence. The hitman hits the Russian leg sweep and atomic drop followed by a clothesline. 
We see the elbow drop, Brad signals for the sharpshooter, but Ted DiBiase distracts the referee and this allows the kid to grab Brett. Tatanka goes to strike the hitman but Brett ducks out of the way, the kid gets nailed and Brett wins with a roll up. This was a perfect match for a world champion heading into Wrestlemania. Brett showed why he was the best in the company while also showing just enough vulnerability during the main portion of the match. This is how it should be done, make your champion look good before a pay per view. WCW could seriously take some notes here, a solid main event and Raw scores another point. Back on Nitro, the presence of Zeus and this other giant dude actually scare off the Mega Powers. Zeus looks fucking ridiculous with those painted on eyebrows by the way. He's shouting and screaming and he just doesn't play the part all that well. Tony Schiavone interviews the heels next and if you watch this on the network, you'll see an edited version. On the proper live feed, Sullivan named the giant newcomer as the final solution. This was his name because Sullivan was looking for the to end Hulkamania, and in the end, this big jacked up guy was the solution. Turner Broadcasting got a lot of complaints about this. WCW tried to claim that they didn't know the name would offend people, and the name was eventually changed. You can see the whole proper promo on YouTube. Zeus's name was now Z Gangsta, by the way. Z Gangsta. I don't mean to be funny either, but it looks like Z Gangsta's lazy eye gets progressively worse as this promo goes on. Anyway, this team with the exception of Brian Pullman and the inclusion of Lex Luger would face Hogan and Savage in the Doomsday Cage match at Uncensored. Collectively, the heel team was known as the Alliance to End Hulkamania. Flair, Taskmaster and Anderson all take turns in running down Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage while trying their best to promote Uncensored. But Zeus is just so distracting and the naming of the solution here kinda renders the rest of the promo meaningless. It's like, what the hell did they just call him? It's a moment of madness from WCW that they took a lot of shit for. Also, it seems like WCW left a ton of this pay-per-view up in the air until the very last minute. Not once was the rules of the Doomsday Cage match explained to viewers. On Raw, we have the final Billionaire Ted skit. It's a ripoff of A Few Good Men, a movie that you should check out, by the way. It's one of my favourites. Anyway, Billionaire Ted is getting questioned by the Federal Trade Commission, or the Federal Turner Commission, about the upcoming Time Warner merger. Ted is asked if he simply spends money to kill off his competition, and Ted is asked if the World Wrestling Federation is his next target. Ted delivers the famous you can't handle the truth line before claiming that billionaires run the capitalist society that we live in and Ted Turner is one of those billionaires. Ted says that he decides what people watch and he's fine with destroying lives in his capitalist world. Ted says that hostile takeovers and predatory practices are the backbone of his existence and he doesn't need to explain himself to the commission. Ted is pressured into answering the question. Question. Is he trying to put the World Wrestling Federation out of business? And Ted admits that he is. Man, you can't help thinking that these skits took a real turn here over the past few weeks. They started off as fun and goofy, but they actually feel a little dark at this point. A message appears on screen urging viewers to write into the FTC in regards to the planned Time Warner merger. The message reads... Ted Turner is reportedly scheduled to testify before the Federal Trade Commission this month concerning the merger of Turner Broadcasting with Time Warner. If the merger is approved as proposed, Ted Turner would be in a position to exercise significant control of over 50% of the cable outlets in this country. If you share our concerns, you can make a difference. This skit right here was enough to make the USA Network step in and Vince McMahon was told to stop the Billionaire Ted stuff on WWF television. The network felt that the skits were now malicious. If the WWF were to stay on the air then they had to forward scripts to the USA Network plus a network representative would get added to the WWF creative team. Ted Turner on the other hand found the skits funny. The final point goes to WWF Raw. Jake Roberts vs Davey Boy Smith scored the first point for Raw and Brad and Sean's training videos earned Raw another point. 
The Steiners versus the Public Enemy scored Nitro their first point, but they lost the next one to the Cam Cornet promo. Diesel finding himself in the casket is one of my favourite moments in Raw history. It earned the WWF another point. And then Tatanka vs Bret Hart was a good main event that gave Bret more momentum going into WrestleMania, so Raw scores another point. Finally, the finale of the Billionaire Ted saga got a little below the belt, but it's so interesting to watch. Much more than Kevin Sullivan naming his newest acquisition the final solution. So Raw scored the final point. WWF Raw destroys Nitro this week, in my opinion. The heat's been turned up on the road to WrestleMania for sure. The scores are now tied. Raw has pulled it back, 11 points each for Raw and Nitro, along with three ties. In the TV ratings, it was the complete opposite outcome. Nitro destroyed Raw with a 3.6, while Raw managed a 2.9. Shawn Michaels takes on Leaf Cassidy next week on Raw, while WCW give us the fallout from Uncensored, along with three title defences on one show. I hope you join me next week, and thank you for watching.